Welcome to this RG Pilot video. This is the first in the series of four videos on debugging RG Pilot code. And we'll talk about four methods, one using text prints, one using the GNU debugger, hardware debugging using the ST-Link debugger, and using Citlin hardware. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using an example of uh, I was flying a plane with a rangefinder panel in the OSD, and I didn't like the looks of what the way it behaved, so we're going to debug that. So we're going to start up a simulator with sim vehicle on a plane uh, for the MAV proxy attachment. We're going to show a console and a map as well as uh, enable debugging symbols and uh, allowing the GNU uh, GDB uh, debugger to be attached. That We won't be using that, but it's a good habit to get into. We'll talk about using the GNU debugger in the next um, portion of this series. And since I'm talking about the OSD behavior, we're going to uh, attach the OSD emulator to it. So <clears throat> now we're compiling, running the simulator. There's the OSD window. we got to retrieve it. And before we start, let's look at the rangefinder parameters. What I noticed was the rangefinder panel uh, as just shown on the OSD, didn't appear to be working the way I thought it should be. So first we're going to check the rangefinder parameters. And it's an analog rangefinder, but more importantly, what we're looking at is the maximum allowable and the minimum allowable reading ranges where it's valid. Now, 10 meters, uh, and below shouldn't be displayed, and 39.5 meters and above shouldn't be displayed. But you see we're displaying a, a, a rangefinder value, and I would have expected it to be um, shown as an invalid value. So we'll go, I know it's the OSD screen panel called Draw Rangefinder, and it goes through and first looks to see if there is a rangefinder, otherwise it's under a panel. But it checks the status of the data that it's getting back uh, in the next if statement and says if it's an invalid data, um, uh, display this dashes, which it's not doing. So um, it may be obvious what's going on here, but uh, to those coders, uh, that are familiar with it, but so we'll use the uh, GCS syntax uh, macro that allows us to display in the ground station window, console window, at a certain severity level. We'll choose info, which is a medium level. Uh, a little thing that we'll say is status is equal to whatever the status is. Now, rather than remembering all the formats for the print statements, I just universally use a float and then uh, typecast any number that I get into float so I don't have to remember all the various format commands. Um, you could make them in decimal or integer 16 or whatever, but I just use float all the time. It seems to work out. So we're going to look at that status that gets returned from uh, the uh, rangefinder and see what's going on here. So I stop the simulation with control C, uh, up arrow to get my last statement, it recompiles, it'll recompile the OSD block uh, and link it and we're running again and looking at the OSD and if you look down the console you'll see it's printing out every time it goes through that update loop for the panel it prints out the status. Well what's status 2? Well, status 2 we'll go over and look in the rangefinder declarations for what that uh, corresponds to uh, and rangefinder.h and down there's a little enumeration for status and it's not connected, no data, out of range, out of range low, out of range high, and it's out of range low. So yeah, it's invalid data. I would have expected it to show the double dashes. Aha! We have the status being compared to no data equal to or no data less, and that's only in 0 and 1, and it should be 
anything less than good, in my opinion, should show a double those dashes. So we'll convert it to checking good or less and go back over. And I've intentionally made a mistake here and you'll see it in a minute. So stopping with control C and then up arrow to restart uh, the simulation again recompiles uh, so forth and so on and you'll see it's dashed as we'd expect for out of range low and you see the status is two out of range low and now let's check it on the high end so we'll go to take off to 50 meters remember 39.5 was the highest we should get a valid reading from the rangefinder Got to wait to arm until we get the pre-arms done. Arm throttle, and it should take off and take off mode and climb. So <clears throat> as soon as it gets above 10 meters, we should see readings. And well, we see good status down there, but no readings. Hmm, must have made a mistake. Oh yeah, it, it's got to be less than good, not including good, so okay. We'll fix that, control C, start it again. And good, we've got the, what we want, the dash lines when we're below 10 meters. Now let's go and take off and check what happens as it gets above 10 meters and then gets above 39.5 meters. Again, we wait on arming until we get the pre-arm checks cleared. As soon as it goes green, okay, we can arm. It's climbing, climbing, and okay, at 10 meters, it starts displaying valid rangefinder readings, and it should go blank at 39.5 meters, and it does. So we fixed the problem. So now the rangefinder panel display will only display valid rangefinder readings, ones that we consider be valid. So one thing to note about using this GCS syntax, you need to have a declaration. Uh, and this particular module uses syntax in other places. So it already has the declaration for GCS Mavlink GCS.h so that we have that macro. If you put the GCS syntax in another module that doesn't have that declaration, you'll have to include it temporarily. Uh, of course, you'll want to remove that uh, syntax and if you added the, the header file include remove it too before you go and uh, make a branch that you'll want to submit so now I'm going to show you another way to do it and so instead of using the GCS syntax you can simply use a console print it's called printf and it's in, inter, integral to all the code and it doesn't use the uh, severity info. Uh, control C, stop the sim, up arrow, restart the sim, it'll recompile. And now instead of putting it out to the ground control station console, it throws it to the simulation console. You'll see here, this is the uh, active uh, running of the simulation code. And you, say, you saw the uh, uh, status values there. So we'll arm the throttle in mode takeoff, wait for it to arm again, and then go look at the at the panel. And you see when it gets above 10 meters, it goes to four, which is status good for good readings, and we're displaying them. And then it'll go to status three when we get above 39.5 meters. So that's an alternative way to get uh, printout. And you, of course, you need to remove the statements if you're ever going to submit the code. But that's one way of uh, debugging without having to know how to run the debugger and its commands, uh, which will be the next session. It's a lot more powerful. It allows you to set breakpoints at addresses and name variables to examine variables, uh, to watch variables, have conditional breakpoints. Much more powerful, but a little bit more learning to be able to use it.